Hi everyone, I'm David. I've been traveling full time for almost four years now. Over the last 12 months, I've spent a considerable amount of time in Belgrade, Serbia. We've explored history, food, okay, a lot of food, different areas of the city, and even driven around in a Zastava. There's much more to Belgrade than Budek and Belgrade Fortress. Let's explore some more in this video. I'm stuck in a lift. Hello everyone and welcome back. When it comes to travel, Instagram, social media, YouTube, you name it, it can often feel as though we are endlessly bombarded with this cascade of picturesque locations and picture perfect landscapes. However, does this give a true reflection of the world? I don't think it does. As with food, taste is subjective and the same is true of brutalist architecture. So with that in mind, Dobra Doshli Unovi Belgrad, welcome to New Belgrade. So today I'm in block 23, one of the over 70 blocks in New Belgrade. Novi Beograd was very much Tito, Yugoslavia's former leader's utopian vision for the future of Yugoslavia. Clearly that didn't work out given that Yugoslavia disbanded in the early 90s and became the Balkan countries' states that we know and love today. And for me, New Belgrade is very much the mirror image of old Belgrade. You won't find any gold domed churches here. Everything is very gray and concrete and brutalist, brutalist architecture. And like I said, this may not be to everyone's taste, but for me, and I'm hoping for many of you, you'll find this interesting. <laughs> hmm. Isn't that cool? So, we have of course been to New Belgrade in the past. We came here in another video, the Yugo tour video, where we drove around New Belgrade in a 1977, I think it was, Zastava. But the thing was, I didn't really get to explore in detail in that video, so that's why we're back. Hence, why we're back today. So New Belgrade is very much a post-war city. So construction began here in 1948, the ground was broken then, and it was very much built by youths, around 200,000 people from across Serbia as part of a youth program. And this whole area was very much like swampy and marshy. So a lot of sand had to be moved along a one kilometer channel, I believe, to make sure the ground was suitable for building. You're gonna see a lot of this today. And I really like this. These courtyard areas in these residential areas, it's like a, a picture up into the sky. It's so imposing. With these brutalist residential buildings, imposing is absolutely the right word. Monolithic, blocky, rectangular. It feels like they go on for miles. It feels like that scene out of Inception with the buildings that are looming over you. I come into one just to have a look to go up the top get some views oh thank christ the lift works this is, uh, this is just like the lift at the place i'm staying with those doors okay where should we go 10th floor Why not? oh here we go okay i can't say i'm surprised but the lift is stopped in between floors there's number three down there brilliant all right how do i do this i'm stuck in a lift Okay, it's because the door wasn't closed properly. I'm now on number six. Oh, they were off. Yeah, here we go. God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's all good fun, right? Okay, we're moving again. The adventures of David in a lift. <laughs> in a brutalist building. Here we go, number 10. Okay, it actually goes up to the 12th floor, but as you can see, padlock. But we are pretty high up. Okay, there's a bit of a view in the distance. Let's see if we can go up another building. Oh, this is fun. Okay, it appears I have to keep the door closed with my foot. 
so that it doesn't stop between floors. Oh shit. So thank you to the little old lady who let me in. Um, I could have been any old murderer or a psycho, fortunately I'm not. Now of course if you are an architecture nerd like me, if we compare New Belgrade to cities like London, Paris, Berlin, you'll know that those cities have a far more lengthy history in relation to its architecture. Thus, there's far more variety. In New Belgrade, it's very much uniform. Everything looks the same. But that doesn't mean it's not interesting or unique, because it is unique. I've been to a lot of countries and cities before in Eastern Europe and also ex-Soviet countries that have similarities in terms of its architecture. And I think it's important to recognize that regardless of whether the architecture is gray and concrete and covered in graffiti, it talks about the history of that city and country and it's just as important to come to places like this as it is to go to places like Berlin, Paris, cathedrals, you name it. I love it. By the way, that sign, niche, it's foreshadowing a future storyline. We're now in block 28 and the interesting thing about a lot of these brutalist residential buildings is that many of them are named after certain things. So this is Televizorka. Apologies for the pronunciation. Can you guess why? Yeah, a lot of the windows look like TV screens. Amazing, right? It's uh, interesting that, you know, all these blocks have like this communal park area in the middle. Oh, hello, lads with their tops off, playing basketball, brilliant. Right, let's climb up this little hill. Um, yeah, so a lot of these blocks do feel somewhat communal and it's similar to like communist buildings in ex-Soviet countries that there was this view that they had to be like a collective and communal living with maybe like a sole dining area on one floor. Um, and there's definitely that feel here as well with like the recreational area in the middle. Here's a closer look at the TV screen building. So these windows, are like concrete surrounds and like indented, is that the word? In, and um, it's cool, isn't it? And the thing supporting my theory about community in these blocks is the fact that at the bottom of them all, there are like shops, markets. Here we've got our hairdressers, Friedersko. Is that a male hairdresser, like a barber's? Because Friseur in German is hairdresser, salon. Um, yeah. It's cool. Oh, it's bloody hot. And I'm curious about something, right? For any Belgrade residents, typically New Belgrade. So is there an element of like block pride if you live in a certain block? Because every block I've been to, if you look on the signs there, is the number graffitied on. So it feels like maybe there's an element of pride in relation to what block you're from. Who knows? If you saw the Yugo Tour video, you'll know the building that I'm at now. It's the Gen X, or is it the Gen X Tower? I'm not sure which one. Look at it, isn't it stunning? Let's have a closer look. That is, of course, the residential part. And over on the other side is the part that is closed. And up the top is the revolving restaurant. I've heard conflicting reports about that. Some people tell me that it never revolved and never opened and that there are old menus on the tables from the 80s but other people have told me that's not the case and it in fact did open so who knows but whatever it's awesome okay you can't see me but maybe that's a good thing um the thing i want to say about this building is that from what i remember it was built because uh, tito needed like a building to show people flying into Nikola Tesla airport, like, wow, Belgrade, it's this modern, amazing, interesting city. And, you know, this building is interesting. Just look at it, look, look, look. And you have to remember that back in the day, like in the 70s, 60s, people of great power and influence did come to what was Yugoslavia back then. Richard Nixon, Queen Elizabeth, people like that. So I'm sure, I guess, from the point of view of Tito, he wanted buildings like this to show that Belgrade was this contemporary modern city. Contemporary is the word. Modernist, brutalist. You're getting all the architecture terms today. So this other part of the building, um, the non-residential side, you can't get into. From what I know, you have to have like contacts and the security guard will let you in. Um, it'll be cool to go up there one day, but maybe not today. Maybe you can go in now as a tourist. That's Yugo Tours, the same company I did the Yugo Tour video with. Just gonna have a look see inside. So I just spoke to the guy at the desk, the information desk, and yeah, you can't go up there. Um, but let's just take a look around the lobby area. Got these very old seats. How old is this thing? Surely it must not be a relic. 
Um, oh no, it is 2020, February. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, cool to at least be in here. Look, it's very sort of, you know, 70s looking. Look at that clock up there. And around that corner there are a lot of chairs that, um, you know, have seen better days. But yeah, it would be cool to one day go up here. However, you can go in the residential bit, apparently. I don't know if I'm allowed. I'm not a resident. But um, hopefully these lifts are a bit better than the other one. The lift is coming. It's very nice. Look. Look at the decoration in the lift. This is cool. I'm in the Gen X tower. Or Gen X. Come on. Floor number 30. All my ears are popping. Okay, you need to get a key to get into these bits, but this one's open. I was just thinking it'd be great if there's a window to look out of, and then what do I find? A window. Okay, you can't really see much out here because the window is filthy, um, or at least the outside is, but there is in the Belgrade down there. Look at those, um, you know, square blocks of buildings down there. It's a bit like in um, Ukraine and Minsk when I was there. Wowzers. And up there is the restaurant. The floors have got the uh, floor number on in big writing, and then these circular windows. I think I'm going to go back down in the lift. I'm not going to go down the stairs. <laughs> I'm now in block four, block 34, five, I'm not sure. Studentsky Grad, Student City. And I could be completely wrong. I'm sure I read this somewhere. Hi, Belgrade boys. Oh, I've got to stop that. Um, <laughs> it feels like um, this area was kind of put together more recently. Like, I'm talking like 60s, 70s, because it is different from what we saw before, block 23 and block 28. Um, you know, it's nothing special. It just looks like every other sort of residential block that you see all over Europe, even in the UK. So um, yeah, that's Studensky Grad. Oh, have we got a, what car is this? The lighting's terrible. Is that a Yugo? Is that a Stava? Hang on, hang on. Or is it a Lada? It's a Yugo, hi Han. Right, I'm getting too old for this. I'm blimmin' exhausted. And for those of you, the select few that are total twats. Sorry. Um, <laughs> for any of, us, any of you that's going to say, oh, you keep going to places that are all grey and full of graffiti. Oh, whatever. Chill your boots, Huns. Don't panic, because we're going somewhere now that's like colourful and down by the river. Lovely. If you saw the last video, there was a bit at the beginning, previously on, very dramatic, and we said, it's Hotel Yugoslavia. It's filmed just over there. Because guess where we are, Hans? Hotel Yugoslavia. Now I've come back here because in the Yugo video we didn't really get much, much of a chance to look around, if you know what I mean. Which is like in, out, job done. So this time it's time to have a bit of a closer look. So having a look at this, I really love the lettering above the entrance. It's like old school, it's really dramatic. But then actually when you look at the rest of the building, it looks quite plain. You know? It was like a five-star hotel, but as I think now it's like a three-star one. But, you know, as I said before, like Queen Elizabeth stayed here and stuff. And in the middle there, you've got very reflective windows. I didn't notice that before. But, yeah, it just feels like a plain building. If it wasn't for the, the entrance bit with Hotel Yugoslavia on it, Boulevard Nikola Tesla, um, it, would, it wouldn't really be a landmark, if I'm honest. I'd be curious to see how much it costs um, Hotel Yugoslavia for a night. Maybe I can stay here for a night before I leave. Who knows? Nice little shady area because I've got to be honest with you, I'm about to keel over because of heat exhaustion. It's baking. This is late June in Belgrade. I was here last July and I remember how hot it was. And you know what? I was going to go to a, a place to have sardama in this video. I might do that in the next one or go to a bakery, but you know what? I can't walk any longer. So instead, I can't be about to do this. This is the food section of this video plasma sandwich. Serbians know, all right? <laughs> yeah, this is actually happening. Plasma sandwich in a video. It will all become clear in a second, all right? So basically, it's nice cream with a biscuit thing, but it's not just any biscuit. This is plasma. And I honestly don't know why plasma is so good. I can't put my finger on it, because actually it's quite plain, a bit like the buildings we've been seeing today. But there's something about it, and it's quintessentially Serbian. You know, people have told me, you're on road trips, a little bag of plasma little biscuits. And 
sometimes when I'm out filming, I'll just get a little bag of plasma. And it's brilliant. There's also like um, a box of like plasma crumbs. I put it in Nutella. Apparently you're meant to put it in like milk or something. It's like a, a thing you have as a kid or something, as a Serbian. I don't know, but these are the best. <laughs> We're down to the biscuit bit now. So, because it's ice cream, the biscuit is soft. It's perfect. So let's bring this video to an end because I'm knackered. Um, and I'm gonna use the plasma metaphor, all right? Let's see if those of you that are intelligent can get it. Serbians love plasma. I love plasma. You may not like plasma at all. That's okay. Because going back to what I said at the beginning, tastes differ and that's okay. You might not like the architecture we've seen today, but I do, and some of you may do as well. It's an important part of history in Belgrade, whether it's amazing or whether it's ugly. Who cares? It's part of history. And you know what? For those of you that do say, oh, you want to see the, you know, the horrible places, you purposely show those places. Yeah, I do. And I'm proud of that. And I'll continue doing that because if you want to watch travel videos that, you know, the, the obligatory blonde or couple, young couple in their 20s in Bali, you know, fake bullshit, this isn't the channel for you. With this channel, you get this <laughs> and reality. So I'm going to keep it in this before it melts. Check out my website. It's in the description down below. You'll see an accompanied blog post to this video, as always, with lots of photos, extra video, you name it. We'll see you next time. Catch you later. I can lie, really benedicted to you. All of my attention I've been giving to you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. On my mind, I can lie.